2020 has changed how we do almost every human behavior, down to breathing. But how much do we really know about the air we breathe? We wanted to know how much people thought about the air they breathe. So we started with a simple question. What is the air made uh -oh. of? An activity. I was really hoping the question would be, what is this? Because I was going to go with a pie chart. Like oxygen. And carbon dioxide. Nitrogen, oxygen, and something else. Pollutants, does that count? Started to feel like a mugshot. So even if you know the air you breathe in around 20,000 times a day is mostly nitrogen, you might not know the real scoop on our air, which is also comprised of dust, water, other gases, and some surprises. We spend about 90% of our lives indoors, where levels of many pollutants may be two to five times higher than levels outdoors. And our indoor air quality continues to suffer because of activities like cleaning and the building of more airtight, energy efficient homes. And what's in that indoor air? Well, dust. Some estimate the average home generates 40 pounds of dust a year. That's the average weight of a five-year-old. But what is dust? Well, it's the stuff tracked in from outdoors, but it also originates inside the home. Clothes, carpet fibers, and even parts of us, like our skin flakes, make dust. And in each gram of dust, there can be 500 dust mites. The allergens from these creatures can become airborne, and a dust mite allergy can cause sneezing and difficulty breathing. Other allergens in our dust include pollen, mold spores, and pet dander. Achoo! And what else is in our air? Well, the air also holds water. And the amount of water vapor in the air, or humidity, can be a little tricky to understand. 100% relative humidity is not like being in a swimming pool, but it's the most amount of water vapor the air can hold. Our relative humidity of 30 to 50% is generally recommended for homes. And when humidity gets out of whack, your home may start to smell musty and stale, and mold and mildew could start to grow. Unpleasant and a bit gross to breathe in? Yes but it can also be hazardous to your health. And like we said before, the air is mostly gases. While the majority of the air we breathe is made up of nitrogen and oxygen, there are other gases like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. When their levels rise, they can become dangerous, even fatal. Lastly, let's talk about VOCs, volatile organic compounds. These can also be dangerous to breathe in in high concentrations. VOCs are released from cleaning products, building materials, and even cooking. VOCs, dust, humidity, and gases can be a problem. As homes are constructed to be more airtight, more energy efficient, and better insulated, they are breathing less. But you can do something about your indoor air quality and it may be easier than you think. You just need the right combination of air filtration, humidification control, and ventilation. It may be as simple as changing your air filter more often, adding a whole home humidifier or dehumidifier, or bringing in more fresh air by opening a screened window or door if possible. With the right products in place, you can begin improving the air throughout your home and start feeling the difference. Trap irritating airborne particles. Keep dry skin at bay, reduce odors, and more. So how do you know what's right for your home? Contact a local HVAC pro. They can test your home's air and offer recommendations for ways to improve your home's indoor air quality. With the right solutions in place, you can change your air and change your life. <laughs>